increased with the assumption here. The monastery started by St. Maximilian Colby doing the basilica outside. You know, one of the things that I, I love about our Catholic faith is the depth and the beauty of its teachings and how these teachings are all based on a rich history of over 2,000 years. It's like a diamond, I think, sometimes. When, no matter how you look at a diamond, there's a different beauty that shines through. And that's the same with our teaching, whether it's our theology, our respect for the dignity of life, from womb to tomb, social justice teachings, etc. And the Feast of the Assumption is no different. Today we celebrate Mary's body being taken up, so body and soul being taken up to heaven and being preserved from sin and corruption after death. And it's amazing that this, although this uh, feast and this dogma was declared only in 1950, belief in the Assumption dates back as early as the sixth century. And I found this brief little homily from St. John Damascene, who was, which he gave in the seventh century that I'd like to share a little bit with you. He says, it was fitting that she who in childbirth preserved intact her virginity should preserve without corruption her body after the conclusion of her earthly life. It was fitting that she who bore in her womb the creator become a babe should dwell in the divine mansion. It was fitting that the spouse of God be taken to, he to the heavenly home. It was fitting that she who witnessed her son on the cross suffering in her heart then the pain she was spared in childbirth should then contemplate him seated at the right hand of the father. It was fitting that the mother of God come to possess what belongs to her son and that she be honored as mother and servant of God by all creatures. And they said that was back in the seventh, the seventh century that St. John Damascene wrote that homily. And it's fitting for us to be here to honor St. Maximilian Colby who dedicated his life to the Virgin Mary and dedicated his life in serving Christ through Mary. The prayer that we heard in the second half of the Gospel, the uh, Magnificat, is Mary's humble praise of the love of God for those who put his, their trust solely in Him. And as a deacon, part of night prayer, and as priests say it as well, we say this prayer every night. But you know, for the longest time, I never really got to the prayer. Um, yes, these are beautiful words from Mary, but as night prayer, I never really quite understood when I was going through formation why I was reciting this prayer of Mary's. I mean, I certainly wasn't holy enough or anything like that to be considered um, blessed for all, by all ages. But then one day it hit me, is that these words, they're Mary's words, but they're also my words, and they're also all of our words, because of what Jesus has done. It's not what we do that makes us holy to say that we are blessed by all generations. Obviously, Mary is. But we are too because Christ has come and conquered sin and death for us. And so through Christ that we are called blessed. It's through his passion, death, and resurrection that we can say, he needs to speak for us every day that we can say what Mary said in this prayer. And her words are not bragging, and we don't go around and, and, and brag that we're Christian. We, we don't brag that uh, for our own merits, but we, we uh, proclaim what Jesus has done for us so that others can come to know the life that we have. It's a humble proclamation, really, that Jesus Christ is Lord, and we are not. And without him, we are totally lost. And without the assumption, the hope of our communion with the Lord would be lacking. Mary is the model of all hope for us, because she has done what we all aspire to do. And her earthly assumption completes her earthly role and provides for us a sign of hope, so that we can share, as, Jane, as, as uh, St. John says in his gospel, we can share in that dwelling place that Christ has prepared for us. She is a model of trust for us. She lived her whole life in trust. From the very beginning um, of her life, especially through the, at the Annunciation, she trusted the Lord Sophie and what he had for her. And that her plan for our lives, her plan for, God's plan for her life was the plan for her life, I, her life. I think sometimes when we think of God's plan for our life, we think of, well, yeah, that's God's plan, but I have my plan, and it's maybe God's plan is one of many of equal plans for our lives. And it's not until we realize that God's plan for our life is the only plan that we should be following. And yes, there will be difficult times, and but there will also be times of joy and times of, of great, uh, of great uh, 
accomplishment in what we do because we belong to Jesus. Uh, and all the saints that we're going to see this week, this week St. Maximilian Kolbe, St. Faustina, uh, Edith Stein, um, all those will be examples of following God's plan for their life, even though some of them ended in martyrdom. And her assumption, I think, gives us the final um, aspect of all of our Christian life in that it's, it shows the dignity of human life. The, the, uh, the Immaculate Conception and the Assumption are kind of like bookends. They talk about the respect for life, the dignity of life, and how all of life should be, should be precious from womb to tomb. I want to end with um, a, a very poignant uh, writing from St. Maximilian Colby. He talks about evil in the world. And obviously, he was in a time of the world was suffering very much from the evil of Nazism. But we have a lot of evil in our world, and I think these words are just as appropriate now as they were back then. St. Maximilian Colby wrote, If anyone does not wish to have Mary Immaculate as his mother, he will not have Christ for his brother. Modern times are dominated by Satan and will more so in the future. The conflict of hell cannot be engaged by men, even the most clever. The Immaculata alone has from God the promise of victory over Satan. Assumed into heaven, the mother of God now requires our cooperation. She seeks souls who will consecrate themselves entirely to her, who will become her hands of in her hands, effective instruments for the defeat of Satan and the spreading of God's kingdom upon the earth. St. Maximilian Colby, pray, pray, pray for us. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray, pray for us. us.